Hey everybody, this is Everyday Commentary, and this is a video overview of this light. And this light is the HDS Systems Rotary Executive 200. And so I'll explain what each one of those things means. First, HDS Systems is a very small batch, or maybe even custom, uh, production light produced by Henry Schechter. Uh, his lights are available at uh, on the internet, and they're available through a couple of internet retailers. I don't think I've ever seen a store in per that sells them in person. Um, he used to make uh, lights called raw lights. They're basically the exact same light, he just changed the name. And they are based on the ARC-4 uh, chassis. The ARC-4 chassis had basically the same shape. It was a little bit shorter, but it was um, one of the first uh, really nice uh, LED lights and it had at the time which was astounding 40 lumens on an LED so the body was then taken and used uh, the design was then used uh, by HDS to produce a series of lights that were clickies and twisties and it was also used or adopted or adapted by Novatac to produce a series of lights um, Novatac's lights are still being made but they're not being made in the same way that they were before uh, they used to be made only in the United States, they were pretty high quality, and now they have the, I think it's the Wichita, and uh, the Storm, and they're not anywhere near as good as those original Novatac uh, 120Ps. Um, so, the, the light, the body of the light is a relatively old design, but the thing that makes this light so unique and so new, uh, relatively new, it's about two years old, is this in the back, the tail cap. So the tail cap in the uh, HDS Rotary Executive 200 is what makes it what it is. The first part is the rotary. And so in this light, there are a series of 17 uh, increasing lumens outputs. And if you start with the bezel down, there is a small metal tab, and the metal tab comes up in contact with the screw. As you turn it, it increases, as you turn it around, it increases the lumens output from about 0.5 lumens on low to 200 lumens on high until you come in contact with the screw again, and that's at the maximum setting. Um, so that's the rotary part. And then the executive part describes what kind of tail, uh, what kind of clicky you're getting. Um, in this case, you're getting a relatively flush clicky. It's not perfectly flush, but it's pretty close. Uh, and in the, t the uh, tactical variant, the tail cap sticks out about this much. It looks kind of like the tail cap on this light, the Phoenix PD-22. And so um, this light runs on a, the same battery as the Phoenix PD-22, and it is a 1CR, uh, sorry, a CR-123A light, no, uh, CR-123A battery, and it runs on a single cell. This light is a little bigger than the Phoenix PD-22, uh, and the Phoenix 20, PT-22 is probably significantly bigger than, say, uh, a really small, twisty-only light like the uh, 4.7's CR-123A Mini, which is probably right about where my finger would be. Um, this light, uh, the HDS light, is very robustly built. It has a stainless steel crenellated bezel, and so it will uh, allow you to tell if the light is on when uh, you put it down. Uh, in theory, I guess it could be used as an impact weapon, but I think that that's kind of ridiculous. Um, it has a glass lens, and inside the, or I'm sorry, it had, this one has a sapphire lens. You can also get it with a mineral glass lens. Um, and inside there is a, uh, a reflector and a nice, I think this is an XPG emitter. Um, the body is made of aluminum, and the aluminum has been hard anodized to uh, mil spec, which is hard anodized 3 and the rear cap is covered with a rubber boot. Um, the, the rotary is actually very, very smooth, and I have noticed that when it is colder, it is harder to move, but equally smooth. So I'd imagine that there is some kind of lubricant in there that makes it uh, move smoothly. If I were to undo the threads here, you would see that the light has what are called Acme threads. And Acme threads are notable because unlike regular threads, they are flat at the top instead of um, pointy. So instead of looking like a triangle, the, the threads look like a trapezoid. 
And that is because doing that makes the threads a little bit more robust and it makes it more difficult to cross thread the light. There's a lot of tension on the spring as you could see, but even then it wouldn't cross thread because the threads themselves are so thick and robust. And that's a theme throughout this entire light. Pretty much everything that Henry did in designing this light makes it much more robust than the average light. Um, the, the walls on the HDS are considerably thicker than the walls on this light. Um, the tail cap has a, a, a much more substantial feel to it. The bezel has a more substantial feel to it. The lens has a more substantial feel to it. Um, I would note that one thing that is missing is a pocket clip. So Henry originally released the lights and they did not have a pocket clip. People complained and so he made a pocket clip that mounted here and then kind of bent back. And it was really ugly. Then he made a pocket clip that was a friction or that was a washer style pocket clip. And in the, the clicky version of the slight, you could unscrew the tail cap, put the pocket clip down, and then screw the tail cap on to lock it in place. Because this is the rotary, uh, and the tail cap has so much more uh, it's doing, there is no way to unscrew it and install a clip. So this light does not have a clip. Um, if I were to redesign this light, the one thing that I would do is I would probably make that screw just a little bit bigger so it could be used as an anti-roll device. As it is, this light rolls around quite a bit if you lay it on its side. Um, in addition to that, the, the only other drawback that I could find with this light is it is not exactly perfectly flush when it tail stands. Um, it, it does have a little bit of wobble to it, and you can see that there. Uh, if you would compare this to, say, like a Magizmo, the Magizmo is dead flat. Let me go get the Magizmo. So here is the Magizmo Haiku, and the Magizmo Haiku is dead flat. There is no wobble at all. And um, if you look at these two lights, they are almost identical in height. Um, and they're almost identical in diameter. I mean, these are very, very similar sized lights. This is also a CR123A battery. Um, the the HDS rotary's big trick is the rotary. And the selector ring here, instead of being in the front, like it is on the Sunway Mans and the Jet Beams, is here in the back. And when I got the light, I didn't think that was that big of a deal. But here is why it's a big deal. If you hold the light with these three fingers, which is a pretty natural way to hold a light. So you can hold it like this and kind of go around. And if you hold the light like that, then you use these two fingers and the thumb activates and then the other finger and the thumb can be used to control the rotary. And so you have a very, very precise lumens output. Uh, it's easily variable, and it's variable all with one hand. You can do the whole thing with one hand, and that is a big difference than the other lights that have selector rings. Um, if you compare it to, say, this light, the, the Phoenix PD-20, to you have to switch positions to vary the output. And I don't think that's that big of a deal, but if you can come up with a solution this elegant, you should, you should use it. Um, I like selector rings a lot, and I used to think that it wasn't necessary to have a clicky, but the combination of the selector ring and the clicky being accessible with one hand means that I don't have as much reservation. You know, normally it was you push here and then you had to go up here and mess around, but having it all in one place is really helpful. In addition, having the clicky can give you direct access to, to uh, modes. So for example, in this case, you can turn it on and it's in low, or you can double tap and it'll come on in high. So I really do like the, the setup and the user interface on the HDS rotary. Um, the lumens output at 200 is not as high as you can get on some lights. For example, this light, the uh, LED Lenser F1, it comes on at uh, 400 lumens on a single 123A battery. Uh, and it doesn't have to be like a fancy rechargeable, just a regular 123A battery. So it's, it's significantly brighter than the HDS light, but I'm not sure how much more useful that light is. And even though it's, it's twice as much, your eye perceives lumens increases logarithmically, so it doesn't seem to be twice as bright. In order to get twice as bright, I usually have to bring out my 18650 light, the Eagle Tech, um, the TX25C2. And that light is a thousand lumens and it does look twice as bright. It looks substantially more than twice as bright. 
But here, the big thing is the robust construction and the really great uh, tail cap, rotaries, or selectoring, and user interface. I mean, this is something that you can use in the dark with one hand without looking. And that seems to me to be, you know, like one of those uh, benchmark things in performance. Like if you're designing a light and you can use it one hand and you have essentially, you know, close to infinite variable brightness, and you can do it all with one hand without looking. I, I, I think that that's something that's really commendable. Um, the review is coming, and uh, I'll have it out soon, but this is one really, really great.